Hello everybody, and welcome to another episode of Moving Into the Future. Today, I'm joined by Edward Sanders Jr. of Directed and Peter Lemonier yep. of Intersection Media. And today we're gonna have, this is a first for the podcast, we're gonna have a discussion with a supplier, Edward from, from Directed, and uh, his client, uh, Peter from Intersection. This is a first for us, we, we've never had this type of dynamic before, so I'm excited. Uh, gentlemen, how are we doing today? I'm, I'm doing great, this is fun. First yeah. time doing a podcast. Yeah. I'm all right, like this is the realm that I'm really used to, like just podcasting, but now putting it into like my professional life, it's a fun, I'm doing it with a friend, so I'm okay. And, and see, that's a good point, you know, as far as being friends, because as young people in the industry, uh, the relationships that we build, especially early on, are very important, because a lot of times when you're, you know, figuring it out and, and trying to find your footing, uh, you can feel like you're on an island a little bit. So, uh, you know, Edward, why don't you tell us about what you're working on at Directed and, and how you work with Peter? Yep. So, again, Edward over at Directed. It is my father's company, Edward Sanders Sr. It was founded in 2007. It was kind of at the start of it a print solution provider. So I know nothing about printing. I'm still, <laughs> I'm still learning printing. It's part of the business today, but uh, I came in about two years ago. I knew nothing about facilities at all. And Peter actually was my very first client who is now one of my best friends, which is pretty weird because of my previous job, I was not friends with anyone I sold anything to at all. So uh, yeah, it's been a little over a year of knowing Peter and uh, you want to give him a little gist on what we do, how we met, because you tell it really well. Well, the, I always joke the fact that he hopped in my LinkedIn DMs. <laughs> <laughs> but the, he came to me just being under 40. He was like, yo, we're in a facilities business. I don't care what happens. Let's link. Let's talk and let's, let's build something. Let's figure this out. And after COVID, working facilities in general in the city it felt really disconnected because some companies was was full throttle on going back to the office mm -hmm. five days a week. And then there were some companies that was like, oh, there were some companies that really preferred the hybrid. So just trying to navigate that working flow of traffic within offices and just talking to other people about facilities. And I feel like a lot of my facilities, people that I knew before COVID, left New York yeah. for other ventures, family situations. So I, at some point, I felt like I was on an island myself. So it was pretty much two islands that linked up. That's great. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. exactly. And that's what I was saying before, you know, and, and I come from both sides of things. So like I used to work at Indeed and handled facilities there. Um, I did and, not know that. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't know a thing about, I knew about moving, right? You know, that's what I do, but I didn't know much about facilities and like managing a facility and, and, and what it took and, you know, opening up a space and then handing everything over to the local team and all of the different avenues you need to, you know, who is responsible if this happens or, you know, if something stops working, a light. You know, how does the ticketing system work and all of those things. Um, and, you know, I didn't have much of an outlet on it either. I was relying heavily on um, our landlord and, like, the local teams. But, you know, I didn't have somebody like, like Edward to, to rely on there. So, you know, Peter, what was it like for you during the pandemic when you were kind of going through that um, really interesting and unique and unprecedented time? And when you, when you brought Edward into the picture... You know, how did you guys start to work together initially? It was during COVID, I worked at a nonprofit. Well, during the pandemic, I worked at a nonprofit, and I wasn't sure what was the next step of my career. Okay. Um, then I left to spend some time with my family. My mother got sick, so I dealt with that. And then I got hired... I got hired at Intersection on my birthday. Oh, nice. <laughs> which was... It was, a, it was a great week yeah. in my life. Um, <laughs> and I got hired... With intersection, we worked. We was in Hudson Yards. That's when we started. Well, that's when I started, and the plan was to hire someone to move from Hudson Yards to a smaller location, because the space that we had, to, as you know, space that we had at Hudson Yards, it was luxurious. Yeah. But yeah. just entirely too much. Mm -hmm. It was. It, it was beautiful. Space, it was gorgeous, <laughs> but it was just too much. So my job was to do that. 
mind you, I've done, this was probably the eighth move I've done oh, throughout okay. my companies, like various sizing, just different time frames. Edward hopped in my DMs. <laughs> I love that term. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he hit me up right around the time when I was starting to plan the move and trying to get all the pieces together. It was one of those things. Oh, like, it was good time. It was, it was, oh it was very good time. And let and that be a testament to LinkedIn, you know, cold calling and marketing. You never know when you're going to hit strike gold there. Yeah, it, it was good timing, but he's also a pleasure to deal with. Yeah. It was great time, especially shouts to LinkedIn, because I got this job through LinkedIn as well. Right. So LinkedIn just holding me down. <laughs> <laughs> but just speaking to someone in our realm, because I was told the average age of a facilities manager is around 50, 55. Wow. So coming in at 36, 37, I was walking in like I was a young kid on the block and just trying to make moves and not do too much, but still find my own realm, my own lane. And everything that Directed offered me, first they just offered me like moving services because I didn't want to go fully dependent on him. I'm like, let me be an adult. Let me find other venues. Let me add to a, a harem of vendors or just a Rolodex. Right. He started introducing me to other facilities managers as well. And then we just started working more and more. And then any issue I had when it came to other vendors, I would call them for advice. Nice. I'll call them for advice. Or do you know another vendor that does this? Or can you refer someone to me that you trust? Because at this point, I'm kind of just reaching out to people that I don't have a relationship with. Right. I have a relationship with you. Right. So if they have a relationship with you, they're all right to me. Right. So he became, your, you know, your trusted consultant vendor through that process. And Edward, I'm sure for you that was very empowering because, you know, like you said, you had, uh, when you had gotten into the industry, and, and when did you start working with your father initially? January of 2022. Right. So right around that time, he must have been one of your first clients, and for him to put so much trust in you and faith in you to help him, you know, introduce new vendors must have been really, you know, empowering and, and rewarding for yourself. So when you were going through that and, and now let's let's kind of set the stage here. When you were going through this, you really didn't know much of like what you were doing, but you were fi figuring it out. I'm yeah. sure I'm nope. sure you were going to your dad a lot for this. Yep. So what was yep. that like for you? Um, in the beginning, I had no gray hair. I'm just going <laughs> to preface that. I felt so young. And then I realized, wow, I have to actually have a client that depends on me for an array of different things and is asking me questions. So when I joined, I told my dad, I go, whatever I need to do to learn, just please teach me. I go, I will do the crazy hours. I will be hands on in the shops. I will do the moves. I will do with the painting. I will help with the signage installs. Just tell me what I need to do. So yes, in the beginning, it was my, it was my first big move project. I think it was what a hundred thousand square feet. Wow. Yeah, it was yeah. it was a big move, and I definitely had my hands full. <laughs> but in the process, the PMs, the team on site were very helpful. They knew that I was young, unexperienced, and they made sure I understood exactly what was going to happen how it would happen, and amongst a bunch of other things that we did together, that was like the, wow, this is not as easy as I thought it would be. <laughs> so I give a lot of credit to moving companies, to facilities people, because it's not as easy as, you know, everyone thinks, especially like, you know, I have tons of friends who work in offices at big companies. Everybody just kind of thinks it just shows up and it's like, oh, you know, it's just there. Well, that's yeah. what they expect, right? Yeah. And, that's, yep. and, that's, and that's how we do it. And no, it is one of those things. I mean, you mentioned, Peter, you've done about eight of them. Um, I've done God only knows how many. <laughs> but uh, it's one of those things that you realize you certainly can't do it alone. And you need the right people supporting you and working together. And, and also setting up those trust relationships where you can communicate freely on things like you know like there's no holding back you can't be afraid to like ask whether you think it's a dumb question or an obvious question or whatever it is like if it needs to get figured out you figure it out you do what you got to do and then you take it from there so i'm sure you both kind of went through that together and through that process it really helped you both grow and build that trust together you know and and, and get to where you are today yes, yes. like even like little things like 
coming into intersection, my first time using a, the payment program called Cooper. Yeah, right. <laughs> they know Cooper. So when it was going through the payment, it was like, y'all ain't payment. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, I'm not trying to not pay. I just don't know. Right. <laughs> so, right. So. And Cooper, I deal with that too. That's a whole other exactly. set of things. I come from procurement. So I know the ins and out of Coupa. SAP Ariba, I procure, I value, uh, you name it, procurement system wise or accounts receivable, any of that, I am very familiar. That's that's what my first job was. See, and that's um, that's that incredible value that you don't even know that you can provide without it. And we all have those skills too, you know, those, whether not insignificant, but like just special, special skills that, you know, help along the way. So um, was there something specific, Peter, that besides the procurement aspect, that and besides Edward's network, you know, was there something else that you saw when you started working with him that you're like, you know, oh yeah, like this is going to be my guy, you know, this is somebody who's, who's going to be able to really help me? He believed in me. Yeah. Like just straight up. Like I told him my vision and he told me his. We both had the same vision of being under 40, being in a field of a bunch of older men. Yeah. And just not feeling, not feeling not feeling that you could fit in immediately right unlike other people that's 45 50 years old walking into seasoned you know. yeah yeah like we're both young and we both want to move forward we both trying to turn this into a fruitful career mm -hmm. but we just don't know how to we just know how to, we know how to look forward we just don't know how to move forward right right and so that's a good point too hence the name of this podcast moving into the future so <laughs> that kind of segues nicely into what we're talking about you know how, so the move already happened, I'm, I'm yes. presuming, yeah, you know. Um, how are you guys still working together today? Are you still handling facilities? or what's the, what, what are you guys working on today? Are you guys even they, working together, or are you guys just boys now? I just came through, like, 30 minutes before this was supposed to start so I could talk to about furniture. Oh, so, nice. <laughs> so I came here. I'm like, while I'm here, let me get some other work done. <laughs> furniture, uh, signage. Very March. nice. Um, painting. Well, paint, oh, well, we're, we're gonna get to the painting oh, oh. story, but uh, no, basically it's it's been a fruitful relationship. The joke between like me, him, his girlfriend, my girlfriend is I text him more during the day than I text my own girlfriend. <laughs> just just because I, I like it's him. All day, every day. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's he's a great guy. Like you'll get to know him better. Uh, we go out on double dates. We hang out. I invite him out for like golf events. Just just like friendly stuff yeah. because I. From where I came from, my father's always told me, Ed, he goes, anyone who's not nice to you, I don't care how much business they give you, it's not worth it. Work with people who respect you, value you. So that's that's what I've been like living up to. And that's absolutely the name of the game too. And there's been times in my career where I've just like had to walk away from clients because you mentioned it, Peter, already, you know, there's immediate collaboration and you know, we're gonna do this together. We understand the position that we're in is young people in this industry, we're gonna help lift each other up to get to where we wanna go. You know, a lot of times with that, not a lot of times, but sometimes with that vendor relationship, there'll be a lot of finger pointing. And you know, and like a lot of times the client will be unwilling to accept part of the blame, you know, for whatever reason. Um, but what you guys have done together is like, you know what, whatever's happening, we're gonna get through it together. And that's how great friendships start, yes. you know, and, and, and things, uh, like that, so that that's really great. Good for you both. What's the painting story? He has to tell the painting story <laughs> because it's 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 a good one. So it's a good one. long story short, we had to move from Hudson Yards to Park Avenue in three weeks. Yeah, like it was, it was pretty much you're on standby. Then once the lease gets signed, that's when you got to move in. That's another story, by the way. <laughs> that's that's another story. This was the most difficult move I ever had to do. I'm happy I had him by my side. Long story short, the painters was lackadaisical, maybe two or three days before, like, it was supposed to move in October 11th. October 7th, I realized only one painter was coming in between 9 and 1, taking lunch, not doing it. So I kind of kicked them out. I had issues, words, back and forth with the painters. I called Junior, I said, yo, this is my job on the line. Do you know any painter that could come in on Saturday? I need this. Like, I don't care what, let's get it done. He FaceTimed the painter within an hour. We scheduled it. And the painters came through on Saturday. There was 13 of them. They came through, painted whatever they needed in six hours. Wow. Mind you, they had lunch. I fed them, like, 
they got things done in six hours and had a smile on their face. Even the dude who owns the the manager, he came through and like, instead of pointing people say this needs to be painted, he just, instead of like telling them, oh, that wall, that wall, he just took his hoodie off and started painting too. And I said, that's a manager. Right. Like, yes, you tell your people what to do, but you you pitched it. And I looked at my, I respect that. Yep. That's the kind of people I want to work with. Because managing is not just telling people what to do. Managing is showing them. And then, you know, doing what you can to help out your team. But you have to show them. You have to lead. And you have to lead by example. Absolutely. And that's that's something so important in, in all of what we do, you know, whether it be facilities or as a supplier, or as a mover. You know, even though we're, like, technically in sales, you know, so to speak, uh, we're yeah. not exactly the, you know, like, project managers. I mean, but sometimes you do have to wear that hat. I was in Philadelphia yesterday uh, for a client. Um, they're a West Coast-based company, and they had shut down their Philly office, so I was talking to my client, and I was like, who's going to be the on-site contact? She's like, well, the landlord can let you in, but there's not going to be anybody there like from from our side to tell you what to do. I was like, oh no, we can't have that. Like that's gonna create, because we're basically, we were basically packing up a bunch of stuff and then shipping it all over the country to different uh, their different locations. And I was like, oh, that's not gonna do. I was like, I'll take the train down there and I'll be the onsite contact just to make sure everything gets to where it needs to go. And like, that's the type of thing. Like sometimes you just gotta show up, you know, I'm 6 a.m. On a, on a train to Philadelphia for this project, and but that's what's necessary. You know, you got to do that in order for the project to be successful because that's at the end of the day what everybody wants because yes. it looks, it helps you out, it makes the client look good, it makes you look good, and then it makes your company look good. But what's important, what you did, is having the right vendor in place. And I feel like that's something directed as you've developed from a printer solution company to a facility company. To a, to a technology services company, um, has done a very good job, you know, you and your father, of uh, creating that and building that. Can you talk a little bit about that? Like, you know, for example, you don't need to name the painter by name if you don't want to, but how you, you know, knew to have that person? Did you go to your dad and say, like, you know, this is who we need? Or, or how do you vet your, your vendors who represent, you know, directed for the various services they provide? Um, there's, there's a, there's a few ways. So partially from my father doing this for a very long time, he's met a ton of people. Um, he also just has relationships and has invested in certain companies that now are under the directed portfolio. So it really, you know, depends on the circumstance of what the service is, but for painting, the company that does all of our painting is my dad's best friend's brother. No. So, so <laughs> not you people. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. people. They uh, they went on vacation together for my dad's birthday. Whenever our clients need anything painted, he knows it's you know, hey, if it's a directed client, they're treated as family. So that that's what Peter got. But uh, yeah, it's it's very very different from you know when I first knew my father he was doing directed as a side thing and it wasn't until like 2017 where directed like was his full-time job and then when I first knew he was doing it full-time it was only printing there was it was corporate stationery promo swag event solutions so where it is now is completely completely different than seven eight years ago so um, and the slogan I've come up with is directed a corporate interior solution provider. There you go. So the way my dad's long-term clients have phrased it is, hey, I've known Ed for 30 years, 20 years, 10 years. If I don't know where to go, you call Ed. It just so happens I'm also Ed and directed <laughs> is called direct right, Ed. Right, right. Someone 20 years ago told my father he's very direct. If you start a company, call it direct ed. So that's how you get directed. And it's worked out ever since. That's awesome. Yes. And that's a nice little history. Peter, what is, uh, what's your history? So you mentioned you were doing moves before for not-for-profits in, in that type of world. Have you always been in the facilities world, or how did you kind of delve into that? Accidentally, this is a family business. Yeah. Uh, my mother was facilities manager at Con Ed. No kidding. Yeah, at Uni at uh, Irving Plaza. Wow. Right there. 
And I always used to, when I was a kid, run around kind of yeah. and just see her what she did. No clue what she did. <laughs> Not a single clue. And then I graduated college in 09. So, you know, that was right, the whole... Right, right. Same. I was, I was 10. Yeah. So that was the whole... Uh, recession. The recession. So I had to do nothing but temp jobs. So I just kept building operation years. And then I finally got hired with Adobe. Oh, cool. And when I did Adobe, I consolidated three offices into one when we... When uh, Adobe bought three smaller satellite offices, I forgot one, but I know one was Behance and the other was Aviary. Cool. So it's just something I just built on. And when I was younger, teenage college years, I used to throw parties. Yeah. So to me, this is all project management. Same. <laughs> like putting people in places to do what I need you to do. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> that like, is, parties? That that's is a, hilarious. That's oh, no, but I'm the same way. So I used to throw all these parties in high school. Um, and like it's the same sort of thing because you got to set up for the party when the party's going on you got to manage the party you got to make sure everything's operating efficiently within the party obviously vastly different than an actual <laughs> like move project or something to that effect but then like after the party you got to make sure like everything's straight and like you know whatever it may be i'm not going to get into specifics but like <laughs> you know it's 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 good to close it out if you will you and have that's to, the same thing it's event management yeah, that's what to, move management is the the office is you have to create the vibe parties is one vibe office is another vibe but you have to find ways to create the vibe put the best people in place yep. find the best vendors like then with my office it would be finding a painter finding movers before a party finding a dj finding bartenders finding security finding the best people that you can to make sure you look the best you can. <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> that's, that's incredible. And that's absolutely right. And I've always said that, too. Like, even, like, with a lot of, uh, you know, we, we were talking at the uh, IFMA yep. um, award ceremony. Like, you know, I'm on that committee. And, like, I just, I love hosting throwing events. That's just something I've always been good at and always enjoyed. So, like, the way I see moving is it's largely like that. You know, like, it's there's a pre, there's a, there's a, you know, during and then there's a post and it's all event management essentially, setting up the best people and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, so that's funny. So what do you guys do uh you know, outside of work? You said you you know, your girlfriends get along and stuff like that. Like, you know, how is uh what what was that like when you're like, damn, like, you know, we've come this far, we're we're chilling outside of work now and this and that. Well, the first day we went to went to catch steak yes. actually. Oh yeah. nice. Yeah, it was it was a great dinner. But um his girlfriend Ari she doesn't eat what the sushi she doesn't eat sushi yeah yes so a lot of the things we ordered were sushi <laughs> so i think ari only ate these stuff because we were there and she was like oh i want to like make sure and then peter was like thank you like i like sushi she's starting to like sushi what is it, the spicy tuna? Yeah. That's yeah. a good place to start, spicy well, tuna. Yeah. That's, that's what I started with, I think, back in the day. <laughs> it's, it's a nice welcome. Exactly, yeah. exactly. That's yeah. a good start. Eventually, you know, she'll be moving on to eel and all that jazz. Yeah, um, yeah. and um, no, we just went out two weeks ago with Sweet Briar. Yeah. Incredible restaurant. Where's that? 27th. Nice, okay. And between Park and something. Cool, yeah. okay. It's okay. incredible. But yeah, like, I try to build a network of clients who can become exactly, friends exactly. because it makes it a lot easier for our generations to get along and work together just very similar values of how we brought up so it's yeah, it's a great thing exactly and it's the same as like you know the relationships your father has because when you start those relationships at a young age you're gonna have them for the next you know 20 like 30 years you yep. know we'll be doing this i mean Hopefully retire a little earlier than that. That's the point. Uh, but not, right, exactly. Not but, with uh, the current state. Yeah. But we're, <laughs> we'll hope. But, you know, you keep doing your best. But, uh, you know, that that's kind of how it goes. And when you can have, that's like such a luxury in your career because it makes everything so much more rewarding when you get to do it with people you like. My mission statement for work, and like this podcast is part of it, is I want to do cool things with people I have fun with. You know, and like that's exactly what this is. And, and when we're working on projects together, like when you get along with people and, and when you can bring in a bunch of different people too, like, you know, whether if it's like a big opening and you got like the furniture person that you know well and the architect and the IT person and all these people and you can do it together, like that just makes it so much fun because then afterwards you do get to have a real party and, you know, it, it becomes like a whole, whole fun thing. 
and then we both tell our girlfriends how cr- they see us how crazy we are. Yeah. And we look at each other like, how did we love these? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, that's the thing. And you guys, you know, you get to say like, look at all this stuff we're doing. You know, it makes you guys look better towards them. Like they're like, at least we know they're doing something at work, right? We're adults. <laughs> I swear, we actually were. <laughs> you, you're my co-sign. Now my girlfriend knows like, oh, you actually work, work. Yeah. Right. See, there you go. It's it's uh it's um it's not as simple this industry as I thought it would be, but you learn a ton about everyday life for corporate clients. It's it's really cool. Yeah, absolutely. And, and last question, you know, this podcast is called Moving into the Future. So you know, is there anything um, that you guys envision for the future that you'd like to work on together? You know, is it a tech technological solution that you can implement at your company or? Um, you know, is it something bigger? You know, is it, is there anything else? Maybe if it's even outside of work too. You know, anything that you guys are trying to work on? I think me personally, I just want to build on his network of just facilities people, especially under 40, under 45, those who might feel alone mm-hmm. and on islands. I want to make sure that even though I'm getting help, that I can reach out to someone else and help them. Yeah. If I could be a resource to them, because once I bring them to the fold, now there's a whole network of people they can ask questions that I may not have the answer to. Yeah. And just, like, coming into this job, being a facilities manager, I fought imposter syndrome. Yeah. I want to make sure that everyone's going to go through that eventually, Mm -hmm. but those phases are less and far in between. Yep. Yep. That's a good answer. Yeah. No, I mean, the only thing I'm really focused on right now, and Peter's been coming to them, is I host, like, a monthly small networking group of just clients. Mm -hmm. So they could get together, they can meet, they can collaborate, they could hear about each other's problems, like Peter met Lida from Vivo and other people. So it's that's what I've been working on. So how you, you do this podcast, which I am a huge fan of this kind of thing. So this is great that our industry has something like this. What I've been doing is just trying to keep a very small, like 10-person group that gets together once, twice a month and just gets to mingle amongst right. my clients and they can hear case studies of what I've done for them and this and it's a good thing for me it's a good thing for Peter as you're hearing from him it's just good for me to at least get them all together so you know they could compare stories and learn things that maybe they haven't you know had to meet yet in the field love that that's great and it's all like I said about making those connections so gentlemen I was I'm glad that we got to connect today yeah. this was awesome no this was fun yeah yeah, yeah this is great yeah so, this was this is cool I I like this did this it live fun. up to the expectations because you were excited about this. I was I was <laughs> I've, I've been trying to do this for a while so I'm glad we finally got to do it yeah, yeah he me was too. so excited but I'm like come on relax <laughs> <laughs> come on just act like you've been here no this is this is first great, though. this is great though so gentlemen thank you both uh, I'm excited for you it was great to learn more and uh, hopefully we can do it again someday. Sounds good to me. Thank you for having us, man. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Be good.